we got some uh, new, uh, other uh, news out of uh, college football. Some more watch lists uh, are coming out. This, this would be the week after media days uh, if things were normal, which, you know what? Things watch list season. Watch list season. <laughs> you know what? That's about as positive as news <sighs> Man, that you'll find out there today. All right, give it to me. Then we, go, we, got, we got LSU guys. All right, we got a couple ones. of LSU uh, flavors here. We've got, first off, the Jim Thorpe Award. You've got Jacoby Stevens and Derek Stingley on that watch list. No surprise there. Derek Stingley, I would assume, is the odds-on favorite to win the Jim Thorpe Award. Jacoby Stevens really starting to get that love that I feel like he deserves. Okay, if Clyde edwards Elair was my guy a year ago, well, my guy this year is going to be Jacoby Stevens. That's the, going to be the guy that I champion for all season long. You could tell at one point when it clicked for him last year and when he said, you know what? I've got a position, Hanny. I know what position I'm going to play. And I don't fault LSU for trying to find a position for a five-star talent like he was, but it just didn't click. Once it clicked, you saw why he was a five-star talent. I can't wait to see what Bo Pelini does with Jacoby Stevens. And again, Derek Stingley, his play just kind of speaks for itself. So what are the differences that might impact Jacoby Stevens in a Dave Aranda defense versus a Bo Pelini defense? I just think you're more aggressive in a Bo Pelini defense. I think you take a little bit uh, more chances in a Bo Pelini defense. You're going to see him coming from different areas of the football field. You're going to see him line up really in different areas. And when you have a guy with this skill set, then you're going to get a, a creative with him. You're not going to be scared to put him in the box. You're not going to be scared to rush him uh, in the middle of your defense. And so I'm excited just because I think you're going to get the most aggressive style of defense you've seen in a long time. So the safety, I'm going to call it a rotation because you're going to play yeah. more than a couple guys. Todd Harris coming back. He was a starter at the beginning of last year, yeah. and there was a lot of good things said about what he was doing back there. That he was basically He's doing the brains. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That he was. I hate to use the word quarterback of the defense That's because that, fun. that that <laughs> uh, quarterback of the secondary anyway. Yeah. That uh, some of the things that he was doing that would have freed Grant Delpit up to to move. So you get him back and. Maurice Hampton Jr., who showed just tremendous potential in limited action last year when he came back from the injury. Safeties you, safeties you got. You got them, and you got them in bunches, and you have a variety of different skill sets. That's the most important part. We've just talked about Jacoby Stevens, who is every bit of 225 pounds. We've well, got Todd Harris, who is 195 pounds. Then you've got Kerry Vincent, who is a track star, right? You've got Mo Hampton, who's a little bit of a bigger safety Love Mo Hampton's angles. I know that might be boring to the, the normal listener. When you start talking about X's and O's, he takes the perfect angle to the football almost every time. And I don't know if, it, if it's because he's got a baseball background and he's used to track and fly balls. I don't know what it is. But from day one, go watch the end zone copy of the game he started against Arkansas. And his angles are almost perfect every single time. And you don't typically see that from a freshman player, especially in their first start, like he was filling in for Grant Delpit there. So I love the group. I think it's got depth. It's got different styles. It's got different flavors there. That's my favorite part. Jo uh, Jordan Tolls, let's not forget, he's been here too. He was an early yeah. enrollee. They raved about him early on in the spring. We could see him make an impact. So between who they have now, who they have coming next year, that's a position which you would expect, right? Your DBU, you'd expect it to be that, but it's really healthy right now. You always notice when a safety takes bad angles. It's yes, very, you do. It's very, it's very easy to tell when they take bad angles. Yes, you do. There were some bad angles in the Ole Miss game. I think I think the players and coaches would tell you that, right? Yeah. There were some bad angles in that game. Well, they you know they got it fixed at the later part of the season. That's when they started to play that that uh, different you know, you know kind of brand of defense there after that game. Where let's call it like it is. They got embarrassed. They told you that. And for a young player like that, I love the fact that he has that skill set. And more good news. Well, you know, Please. this season it's not negative news. Like uh, we've been having this view all day long. Buckus Award watch list. You got Jabril Cox coming in, obviously the grad transfer. Damone Clark also on that list. So LSU's two starting linebackers on the Buckus Award list. So that's four defensive players. Wouldn't um wouldn't surprise me if if one of the four won the award. I think it's safe to say. Derek Stingley being Stingley's gonna Stingley would be uh a at worst, I think an even money favorite. I was about to say, to, come on, give me to, some to win it. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine that you would get any better odds than no, that. No, you're not. And this is against the rest of the country. I mean, there's plenty of plenty of competition. You, uh, we get to, to the to the lineman part of this. Tyler Shelvin up for 
uh, the Lombardi, you think? I think he will be. Uh, yeah. When, okay, so talking to scouts, the talking to scouts last year, talking to scouts last year, you know, they'd ask the questions and they want to know about Clyde and stuff, but at the end of it, every, almost every time, I'd say 93% of the time, who's 72? Tell me about 72. Yeah. He flashed on tape for them. That's why when it came down to a decision, I was like, you know, if he wanted to come out, he would find a spot. Now, I think he's better coming back to LSU because there's still some things that he has to work on and improve. And I think Coach O is literally the perfect coach for Tyler Shelvin to get everything out of him and to have him in the best possible position in his next step in his career as far as getting to the pros. And But he's on their radar, and he's been on their radar for a while. First-round pick uh, if he has a good, yes. good year, for sure.